Dairying is a tough business at the best of times and with rising and fluctuating input costs and a decreased farm gate price, anything you can do to lock in your costs or lower them is absolutely necessary for business. I'm at Lockie Sutherland's dairy farm. It's a thousand acres just outside of Colac in Western Victoria. He's milking about 360 cows, plus he's got some replacement stock on the farm and he's taking care of his power costs with an on-farm solar battery system that's been supplied by Phoenix. And we're gonna find out a little bit more about how to set up a solar battery system on your farm, the pros and the cons, some tips about how to set it up, and how the whole thing works. <laughs> Lockie, how you going, mate? Yeah, g'day, Tim. How are you? Mate, pretty impressive little solar set up here next to your dairy. Yeah, look, we're trying to do something to yeah. um, help with the environment and hopefully lower our energy costs too. Now, tell me a little bit about your operation. Um, inputs are really important with the dairy farm. Yeah, so, at the moment. so we're a 380 cow uh, dairy farm here and uh, energy is one of our, our bigger costs. Obviously, we've got to milk the cows twice a day. Yep. Um, we use, you know, obviously to run the dairy and heat a lot of water, yeah, yeah, which right. costs, costs us a lot in energy. Yeah. Now milk prices are on their way down again at the moment, aren't they, after coming back a little bit. It's a highly volatile market and having an idea of what you're spending on your costs is pretty important, I assume. Yeah, and, and for us it's important that we try and fix that cost. And, yep. and currently, uh, you know, we just purchase energy on the retail market. And, and yeah, and, and all the predictions are that in the future, you know, the energy price will, will skyrocket. Yep. So we're trying to do something about that. And what's happening on the farm at the moment, mate? It looks like we're in a bit of a green drought, you were saying? Yeah, so we're, we're in, yeah, lack of rainfall. We usually have a fairly wet wet winter, which helps us in the spring. So, um, yeah, it's, it's tough at the moment. So margins are pretty skinny, if there are any margins. And, and our milk price reset on the 1st of July, which is only you know, a couple of weeks ago. So mate, this is a trial and you've you've had this on farm for how many weeks now? Oh, I think we've we've had it set up for about six weeks now, Tim. Yeah. Okay, and it's running all of your hot water. You've just gone through the shortest day of the year. Yep. It's lunchtime now and the fog's only just clearing. Yep. Pretty challenging conditions considering you're using all your power in the dark. Yeah. How's this system coping with recharging the battery? Oh, look, look so far it, it, it's, filled up to 100% after demand's been pulled in the morning. Right. Um, and then obviously at night, demand comes out and then there's still enough there to recharge in the morning. So, so these, it's, it's going panels, up and down to 100%. Yeah. These panels are giving you 100% charge of those batteries with yep. like five or six hours of usable sunlight a day. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, yeah. And the guys are monitoring it, it monitoring it through the system remotely. So yeah, right. yeah it's, it's coping. That was going to be, that was one of the things that I thought would really test the system, having yeah. it at this time of year. Um, yeah, so, so far it's been okay. Now, having these panels on the ground, how much ground have you lost? And has that been a concern to you? Oh, look, obviously you think about that. Uh, we wouldn't have never been able to get the panels on the roof of the dairy yep. to get the capacity. It's also ease of maintenance, uh, ease yep. of cleaning. Yeah, you can just walk along yeah. with a sponge, um, can't you? Yeah, so, or, or hose them with a fire unit. Um, yeah. They're fairly hardy. Um, it, it was easy and quick to set up when the guys set it up. Yep. Um, it's yeah having them on the we do lose a little bit of ground I guess it's I think it was about 55 meters by 8 meters yeah that's, that's the, not a whole hell of a no lot the width, width of the container 50 cow dairy no 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 that's exactly and all the panels concertina back and when it arrives it's in just simply in the shipping container so you just pull it out yeah set up the rails set yep. up the track and then run it out on wheels the panels are adjustable so that obviously they're at the um, maximum height to catch the sun lower in the north at the moment. Yep. And then in the summer you can adjust the, uh, the degree of angles. Down a bit yeah, to catch when there. the sun's more and higher. I'm led to believe that these panels will last a lot longer if they're on the ground rather than on a roof. Yeah, well that, that's my understanding too. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah. look, uh, ease of maintenance. Initially, uh, we've just put a temporary fence around it. You just got a single hot tub. Yeah. Up. Obviously, dairy cows yeah. are well trained to electric. Well, we hope so, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lockie, this is a fascinating system. Let's go meet the brains behind it. You've got Waitchi here. Yep, he's just over there at the system at the moment. Waitchi, how are you going, mate? Tim, good, thank you. Waitchi, I'm really glad to have you here, mate. Yeah, I've been fascinated by solar and batteries for a while. You guys yeah. are targeting ag. 
and you're applying innovative battery and solar systems to try and reduce costs, I want to pick your brains. Can I pick your brains? Yeah, of course. If we're looking at battery solar power systems for farms, the type of use profile really matters, doesn't it? Because there's no one set battery size. Yeah, yeah. So, so because the whole system is modular, we can we can put in different combinations of, of batteries and, and solar to to give you the ideal configuration to match how you use energy for so different types of farms, different even different types of dairies, for yep. example. Um, you know, we, we can essentially configure um, and, and match as close as possible your energy profile. So people need to know when they're getting into solar and battery, they need to have someone talking to them who is interested in how they use power. We're at Lockie's place here at the moment, we've got a rotary dairy, and that's gonna use a lot more power during dark periods than say a robotic dairy where you've had similar setups with smaller batteries. So, so if, yeah, for example, I mean, if, if you're in a operation where you're doing most of your heavy electrical work or, or power use during you know early in the mornings, late in the afternoons, you don't really get much use out of solar other than you know a little trickle yep um and then in the middle of the day you know when solar is at its peak you're barely using anything other than maybe you know heating a little bit of water keeping a bit of um, milk cool and chillers and things um so so the the system is designed that you can configure it so you know change the size of the battery and then also it monitors how you use energy as well so so essentially um, we can we can actually over you know the first two or three months look at you know how you use hot water how you're chilling how you're using your vacuum pumps and everything else and then even provide optimization recommendations so so if you run your hot waters during you know during the day or any time that, that you know that it requires rather than traditionally just heating water at night taking making use of off peak okay yeah. so you might suggest to people if they're going to consider a solar battery system that they actually change their power use however they can like setting their hot water systems to come off and on at a different time of the day yeah yeah exactly so so instead of instead of using uh, you know using power in peaks yep. try and flatten that curve over over the day what that does is you know it optimizes how you use energy but then gives you capacity to use more energy for other operations as well and the battery management system is important with solar and battery isn't it i mean you guys here you have a pretty sophisticated battery management system here you can actually uh, monitor this from your office yeah, yeah. Um, and report back to Lockie and let him know how his power usage is going and whether he needs to make a change. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we can remote monitor remotely, report back to him, but um, Lockie also has the option of actually logging onto it himself and just looking at how he's using power yep. as well, how much power is in the battery, what it's doing. Um, helps him also sort of plan ahead if he if he needs to, to switch things on and off as well. Yep. And then, um, yeah, the, 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 the whole system is, is designed to essentially ensure that the operation is always up and running. So, so the energy management system takes into account all the sources of power. So, so solar uh, can feed in from feeding grid power as well. Yep. Even a backup diesel generator, if, if there's already one existing on the farm. So essentially, what it does is it, it just makes sure that there's always a power supply to the farm. So, so for example, when when um, you know blackouts and brownouts and things, you know s severe weather events and, and power is knocked out, Lockheed will still have power. Now, batteries are changing all the time, aren't they? Yeah. What sort of battery have we got in this system here? Yeah. So, so this one is differs from your traditional, you know, power wall household wall mounted ba batteries in in, the, in terms of this is actually lithium iron phosphate in terms of chemistry. So this this is LIPO4, is that right? Uh, yeah, LIPEO4. -E yeah, 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 I always get confused yeah, with the yeah. letters. Yeah. <laughs> now, is that better? Uh, better in, cer in certain applications, depending on how you use right. energy and, and what source of energy is coming in. So, typically, your lithium ion ion batteries like yep. the ones in your cars and your, your batteries your cell phones your, your laptops they're they're suitable to be fast charged and, and discharged very quickly so, so fast recharge discharge yeah yeah lots of cycles where you're going from full to empty yeah lots of full to empty cycles but the the, the other issue is obviously they're, they're prone to heating and catching fire if yes you over over stimulate so them fire is inconvenient yes very inconvenient lithium ion phosphate is it true that it's less susceptible to catching on fire? Well, there, there, there's typically been no cases where they've actually caught on fire. They, they can get hot. Yes. Uh, but the, the, our battery system is, is built into an IP67 sort of weatherproof container that actually has uh, built-in fire suppression systems as well. So it monitors okay. pressure, temperature, and it's got two stages of fire suppression. So the first one is just the pressure release of a chemical that, that prevents 
um, yeah. fires from happening. And then worst case is if the temperature exceeds the, the, the upper limit, then it, there's actually a, a, a chemical tube that then bursts and then douses the entire... And that's all in this container, it's delivered uh, on site yeah, and concertine yeah. it out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if people are setting up a battery system at home on their farm, they should really, regardless of whether they're using lithium ion or lithium ion phosphate, they should consider where they're putting the battery in some sort of suppression system. Uh, yeah, it, well, our system comes integral, so built in with all of that. I'd say where they put the system is mostly dependent on you know ideal spots where we can have north facing, minimal shading or none if possible, and then as close to the main uh, switchboard as possible. So, so on Lockheed's side, it's about you know 10 meters away from his switchboard, so yeah, re reduce the amount of cabling and things that to to run power back into to the system. But otherwise, essentially, you can put it sort of anywhere on the farm, and, and we can run a, a cable back to to the switchboard. That's that's really it. Now, putting your panels out like this across the ground, most people would mount them on a roof. You reckon there's actually an advantage to having your panels mounted away from roofs? Uh, yeah, a, a, a couple. Uh, so, so first one is essentially if, if you think of maintenance, which which a lot of people with roof-mounted solar panels, they, they they don't really think about it. They kind of just put it on and forget. Yes. Um, but if if the you know even over a three-month period, just just a thin film of dust can reduce efficiency by 10, 15, 20 percent as time. Occurs. So I should be getting on my roof and cleaning my panels. Is that yes, what you're saying yes. to me? At least at least three, four times a year. Um, right. Once a month, if you can. I think they've been up there a year already. <laughs> yeah. So, so trouble. essentially, yeah. And and having them on the ground means that you don't need to get specialized, you know, crew in with yep. you know working heights and, and all the special equipment. Essentially, all you basically do is you know every two two three weeks during winter, um, you know every week or so during summer, literally just just come by and, and hose hoses. Hose do you need to do detergent out. and brushes and all that sort of stuff? Uh, no, no. So we, so actually, as part of our annual maintenance cycle that, that we provide the farm, when yep. we come once a year, we actually pr uh, put a, a protective coating. Essentially, what you put on like your shower screens or windows to prevent accumulation of, of particles on the, okay. on the surface. And typically, yeah, right that on. treatment is good for about nine to ten months. So, so a bit of Windex. Yeah, yeah, essentially a bit of wind. I mean, to be honest, I mean, the, if, if you're if you're if you've got the time, which most farmers don't, but if you do, after you hose it down, just spray a bit of Windex and then wipe it off and, and that, that, that probably um, you know saves you from having to do it once a week down to maybe once a month so it's it's just yeah well it's a great tip for us guys at home as well yeah. if we want to save money on power put some windex on it yeah yeah and then uh, the second aspect of it is um, ironically solar panels if they get too hot they yep. don't operate as efficiently so okay. you can imagine typically mo like 99 percent of all sheds have tin roofs so, yes. and, so and that's going to radiate heat back that's going to capture and radiate heat back to the back of the panel yep. and then that actually reduces efficiency by another 10 to 15 percent in some cases during summer so having them on the ground open to open at the back essentially yep. means that they they're grass always underneath stay, yeah grass underneath they always stay cool yeah um, and they're, they're always operating within 90 percent of, of their efficiency on the ground whereas on the roof it's set essentially middle of the day, especially during summer, their, their efficiency might drop down to 60% just because it's too hot. Wow, we yeah. think about hot, clear, sunny days as being optimal for solar panels, yeah. but if we've got them on the roof, they're actually gonna go down in performance. Yeah, I know, it's ironic, right? So, um, yeah, yeah so, so those are a couple of reasons of having them ground mounted. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've, we've actually seen on a couple of dairy farms where, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, we, we put these in, in the, the carving paddocks. Yeah. So, so the calves actually love having the panels there because it, it provides them with a bit of shade, shading during summer, um, uh, shelter from the rain during winter and, and there's also there's always grass and things that they can graze on underneath so so part of that is they actually help keep you know the keep the, the maintenance keep, keep the maintenance as well yeah. so yeah no very yeah. good well mate we better have a look at the guts of this take us through some of the features of what we got here because I always find this sort of technology fascinating and then yeah. we'll talk about your interesting uh, financial setup where you actually give these systems to people for their current electric use cost yes yes fantastic let's look in the yeah. guts yeah sure Tim I'll open it up and show you what it looks like on the inside all the controls all right so this is what it looks like on the inside uh, we've got all our high voltage controls on this side so so these determine uh, power going to load power coming in from grid and then also the power coming in and out of the batteries so these and then these are the controls for the energy management system, so essentially the, the smarts, the computer, the inverters, and, and everything that runs. 
Uh, the system comes built in with, with lights and, and everything as well inside the container in, in case you need to do something at, at night or just want to have lights on for, for whatever reason. And um, yeah, so, so this is the, the entire switchboard. Um, the, 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 the full commercial version actually has the segregated and, and enclosed um, outside of the actual main container as well. All right, so I'll close up the control system and we'll walk over here and, and open up the batteries and show you what it looks like on the inside. All right, Tim, so this is what it looks like inside the battery cabinet. As you can see, everything within is modular. Uh, I've got modular battery cells, so these are, they just look like larger versions of car batteries. So the reason why we've gone with the modular design and setup is serviceability and maintainability, right? So the, each battery is, you know, in, in cell form. Uh, we can monitor these cell by cell and see, see what, they're, what they're looking at over a five, seven, ten year period. And then essentially, if required, replace batteries by, by module. I mean, right now it, it costs around just, just under 300 bucks to replace one cell. Uh, we estimate that but in seven, ten years time, it'll be close to half the price. And the system is, is essentially in, in, integrally built in with air conditioning to keep the temperature cool so, so things don't overheat, but also to a two-stage fire suppression system that, that ensures that, that there are no fires despite lithium-ion phosphate batteries not being prone to fire in the first place. So Waichi, the message that I'm getting out of this system is that it's customizable, it's replaceable, it's serviceable, and that speaks to your background in mechanical engineering, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, so we come from a background in mechanical engineering, um, actually specializing in, in mining oil and gas, so, so we're quite familiar with, you know, service, maintenance, and, and all the aspects around, you know, making sure, you know, it's simple as uh, simple as possible that, that, you know, almost anyone can do it. And, um, yeah, essentially making sure that, that you know, the, the system lasts, right? It's, it's meant to be sitting out here, you know, on a farm or out in the middle of nowhere for 25 years, right? So, so it's designed to be, you know, as simple as possible outside of the complexities of how it operates internally. Now, the next big question for me is, we keep being told battery technology is getting better, that solar panel technology is getting better, it's getting cheaper, yeah. hold off, it's going to get cheaper, hold off, it's going to get cheaper. Eventually, you've got to jump in. If people yeah. want to jump in with you, they don't actually have to buy this system outright, do they? You've got flexible lease plans and you actually cap it to their current electricity bill? Yes, so how we typically do the, the process is we'll, we'll visit the farmer, have a look at you know, his, his energy bills over the last 12 months, um, ask him some questions on you know, what he does, how he uses energy, um, any issues he's had with energy use recently as well. And then we will essentially look at how much he uses you know, on, on an average basis based on his power bill, what the current cost of power is for, for him and, and on average. And then we, we will lock in a, a, a lease or a lease to own monthly cost at what he's used, what he's paying for energy right now. Well, Lockie and Waichi, thank you very much for the opportunity of coming out and having a look at these systems. Obviously, there are links in the description for how to get onto Phoenix. Yep. Lockie, fantastic for you to be innovating and trying to fix your costs and find sustainability in the dairy industry, mate. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Look, yeah, just trying to do something about, you know, another cost, which is cost yep. of energy. Just another cost, mate. Yep. Yep, That's right. what I hear from everyone. Good on you, mate. No Best worries. of luck with it. Yep, good to meet thanks you. Thanks for having us out. No problem. Wei Chi, thank you very much, mate. Thanks, Fascinating technology you got here. Yeah. If you guys want to find out more about this, there's a link in the description. And if you don't subscribe, you'll miss out on stuff like this.